Hey guys, I'm going to do a video and I've been thinking about this topic for a few days, uh, doing this study, looking at the gospel, saying the gospel of John and specifically looking at Mary Magdalene and doing a study on her and, you know, I'm just get right to the point of this video. I think Mary Magdalene and Judas Iscariot were related and I want to show you this and let me know what you think. Um, you know, just to preface this, like I mentioned in the longer video, I make the point that I think Mary Magdalene is the woman caught in adultery. And she's also the woman that comes to Jesus twice, anointing him with ointment from an alabaster box. And I also think that Mary Magdalene is the same Mary as the Mary that is Martha and Lazarus' sister. And so with all that said, we see the second time on Passover week when Mary anoints Jesus in preparation for his burial with precious ointment. This is done at Simon the leper's house in Bethany. And... I make the point in that first video also that this event is mentioned as at Simon the leper's house in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark. And earlier in those Gospels, there's a leper that was healed by Jesus, and it's the only time that there's an account of a specific leper being healed. And that is in Matthew 8 and Mark 1. I just want to read Mark 1's account, verses 40 through 45. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, saying unto him, this speaking, uh, kneeling down to Jesus, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed, and he straightly charged him, and forthwith sent him away. And saith unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priests, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much, and to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in desert places, and they came to him from every quarter." So here we see that this leper started telling everybody the good news of Jesus Christ and what he had done for him. And I make the point that I think that it started with the leper's family. And then we see this account of Simon the leper. Um, and I want to show you this in the Gospel of Matthew. And we'll read verses 6 through 16 of Matthew 26. Because this will all tie in together. Just bear with me for a second. I uh, just want to preface it here. Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, to what purpose is this waste? For the ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto him, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever the gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial of her. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will you give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver, and from that time he saw opportunity to betray him. So here we see the second time that Mary, Mary Magdalene, Mary the sister of Martha and Lazarus, anointing Jesus. The first time it was at a Pharisee's house in Galilee. And Mary was weeping and coming to him, calling upon the name of the Lord with a repentant heart. Jesus said, Thy sins are forgiven, thy faith has saved thee. And afterwards, she went on to become one of Jesus' greatest disciples. 
And because of that, I think she got a lot of revelations. And one of which is on Passover week that he was to be crucified. And she was coming to him this time with precious ointment at Simon the leper's house in preparation for his burial. Um, let's look at Mark's account. And I just want to read a couple of verses here. And it starts out in Mark 14, 3. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he said at me, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spite and are very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. And then we go into the same thing. There were some that had indignation with themselves and said, why waste this? Why was this waste of the ointment made? And Jesus basically tells his disciples the same thing. Um, and it also mentions by name, out of all the disciples, just Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priest to betray him unto them. So this brings us to the Gospel of John. And in the Gospel of John, let me read the first couple of verses. And it says, Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. So here we see that the woman with the alabaster box was indeed Mary. And Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus. And, you know, in Luke's account of the woman with the alabaster box, it mentions her going to Jesus calling upon the name of the Lord for the forgiveness of sins with ointment, weeping, crying. This is a different event. And I made the point in the last two videos that although those were separate events, in the Gospel of Luke, this second event on Passover week is also there uh, and described. And it's in Luke 10. And so I want to show you this, and this is going to bring all this together. In verse 38, it says, Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, just speaking of Jesus, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, Dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered, said in her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. So even though this doesn't describe at this point in time in Luke's account of Mary anointing Jesus with precious ointment, I think it's the same event. I think this is at Simon the leper's house. Well, it says here that a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. But in Matthew and Mark's account, it says that they were in Bethany and Simon the leper's house. So how does this all play out? So I made the case in the first video that the leper who Jesus healed, who went afterwards and spread the gospel, set it ablaze, um, and spread the matter of Jesus healing him. You know, he's here at the house also, and if he was a leper, he would be outside the house. He wouldn't be able to eat with others. So he's healed. Some of the leper is healed um, when he's sitting with Mary and Martha and Jesus and Lazarus and the disciples here. Um, but I think that after he was healed, he went to his family first to tell them the gospel. And the reason that in Luke 10, it says Martha asked Jesus and received him into her house is because it was both their houses. I think that Simon the leper and Martha were husband and wife. And... When Simon the leper was cleansed by Jesus, 
he told his wife Martha the good news of Jesus Christ. And she put her faith in Jesus Christ. And ultimately, her brother Lazarus did likewise. Now, it took Mary Magdalene a while to do that. But um, ultimately, she did. After she was caught in adultery, had a repentant heart, realized she couldn't keep the law, that she was a sinner in need of a Savior. And then called upon the name of the Lord and received forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. But the point that I want to make here is we see in Matthew and Mark's account that's at Simon the leper's house. And then we see in Luke's account that Martha received Jesus into her house. Therefore, then being husband and wife. But what does John's account say? Well, again, let me read it, but this time I want to add the fourth verse. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, just like in Luke 10. And Martha served, just like in Luke 10. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spike and her very costly and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? So John doesn't mention that it's at Simon the leper's house initially, but he introduces that through Simon's son, Judas, Judas Iscariot. I think Simon the leper and Martha, the sister of Lazarus and Mary, Mary Magdalene, were the parents of Judas Iscariot making Mary Magdalene the aunt of Judas Iscariot. And Lazarus was his uncle. And so we see not only in John 12 that, that account of Judas being called Simon's son, but we see it in John 6, 71, where it says, He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. And then afterwards, in John 13, at the Last Supper, it says in verse 2, And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. And again in John 13, 26, Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. So, putting all this together, I think that Mary Magdalene, Judas Iscariot were related. I think they were aunt and nephew. And Judas Iscariot, I think, was Simon the leper and Martha's son. And so you may say, why didn't Judas Iscariot believe then if Simon the leper, Simon Iscariot, um, was his father and he had seen him cleansed and healed and then saw his parents put their faith in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and life eternal. Um, you know, that happens all the time. You know, it takes a conditioned heart to receive the gospel. Just because you hear the gospel or you have relatives, even parents, who hear and have believed and put their faith in Jesus Christ, that doesn't mean that the children are going to. Um, and, you know, this goes all the way back to Cain and Abel. You know, Cain was never in 
belief. Um, he never put his trust in the Lord. Uh, just like Esau, you know, the same thing uh, we see, even though he sought it with tears. Um, he never had that moment where he placed his faith in the Redeemer. Um, and the same thing with Judas Iscariot. And, you know, I think the reason, at least for Judas Iscariot, is because there was too much other things in his heart. He couldn't make room for the gospel because he had a covetous heart. He had a prodful heart. Um, you know, he was one of the 12 disciples, but he never trusted in Jesus Christ as his Savior. Um, he was the disciple that always had the bag of money, but he was a thief and a liar. You know, as we see in John 12's account, if we just go on, uh, Judah says, Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? He knew exactly how much that ointment cost. And this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag. And bear what was put therein. You know, I think he knew his aunt, Mary Magdalene, and saw her over time becoming more and more of a follower of Jesus and giving up things of the world. She was gathering treasure in heaven where her heart was. And therefore, I think she probably sold a lot of possessions. And I think Judas Iscariot was getting pretty upset seeing this. And I think he knew exactly how much that precious ointment cost because he had seen her gather all this money up and accrue it uh, in preparation to anoint Jesus for his burial. He was covetous. Um, he hated that he didn't have that money. And he saw his aunt doing this, and he had so much indignation at the time of this uh, supper in Bethany with Jesus. Um, and that was the point where he said, okay, it's a done deal. I'm going to go and make that deal with the chief priest. Um, that sealed the deal for him. It sealed his fate, really. And it was out of indignation um, and the lust of money. You know, he served mammon. You know, Mary Magdalene served God. You know, Mary Magdalene kissed Jesus' feet because she loved him so much. Judas Iscariot kissed Jesus with a kiss of betrayal because of hate uh, and unbelief. You know, she had the alabaster box that she break uh, to give the precious ointment. And, you know, speaking of, you know, storing treasures in heaven for yourself, it reminds us of Luke 12, 33, where it says, Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourself bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that fails not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. That's exactly what Mary Magdalene did. Uh, on the other hand, Judas did just the opposite. He cherished his bag of money. You know, so I think this is a tale of two fates within the same family. And Mary Magdalene going from an adulterer, a sinner, to one of Jesus' greatest disciples. Whereas her nephew, Judas Iscariot, went from one of Jesus' 12 disciples to hanging himself and dying in unbelief condemned in his sins. So let me know what you think about this study and the family tree that I painted here and see if this makes sense to you when looking through the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. God bless.